And for more on this, we're joined by our chief foreign editor, Rob Parsons. Rob, so it looks like uh, Netanyahu could really pull this off. Yeah, I mean, as you said, nothing decided yet, but it looks clearer and clearer that that's the case. You know, whereas uh, before the election, just before the election, there was there was talk about possibly a, a 61 majority. It's now 65 they're talking about, and that doesn't sound very very much. You know, but when there are 120 seats, you know. 65, 55, or whatever. But in Israeli terms, that's a really substantial majority. It hasn't been anything like that for, ye for several years now. It would really, in theory at least, make it possible for him to govern uh, without having to worry about putting, cobbling together all kinds of different coalitions. Uh, you know, we're not there yet. There's still a possibility that th things could shift in the, the as the last 15 percent uh, is counted. For instance, Maretz, uh, party on the left, and Balad, one of the Arab parties, are still pretty close to crossing that 3.25 percent threshold, which would allow them to enter the Knesset, the Israeli parliament. That would give them each about four seats. That would tilt the balance away again uh, from Netanyahu's bloc. But at this stage, with the count drawing closer and closer to, to the end, it's looking more and more unlikely that that's going to happen. So people are beginning to think, now, what does it mean? Well, Yair Lapid, who you referred to, uh, the leader of the other major coalition uh, and the current prime minister has said that he's not going to go now uh, to COP27 in Egypt, which rather suggests that he sees that the, the writing on the wall. Um, the Israeli president is going to go instead. Uh, so the, the, what people are looking at now is, you know, what, what, what happens next? And obviously the, the concern, at least among those who are opposed to the, to the, the winning bloc, is that uh, Itamar Ben-Gvir, uh, the leader of or one of the two leaders of religious Zionism and very much on the far right of Israeli politics is going to get himself a key position in, in that next cabinet. And they're asking themselves what that's going to mean. Well, tell us more about him. Why is he playing such a key role in, in this election? Well, he essentially because he now is the his party, which he shares uh, with uh, Smotrich, the, 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 the other leader of this bloc that they've formed called Religious Zionism, uh, looks like it's got 15 seats. You know, that, that makes it the third biggest bloc in the Knesset. Uh, so it gives it, that party, tremendous influence. Uh, and Ben Gvir is not just any, anybody. He's a, a very radical Israeli politician. You know, in, in the past, he's regarded himself, made clear that he sees himself as a follower of Mer Kahan, a uh, racist rabbi uh, who was banned from the Knesset and whose party, Kach, was described by uh, the United States as a terrorist organization. He's never hidden that link with, with, with Kach. Uh, he regards himself as an admirer of Baruch Goldstein, the man in 1994 who opened fire on Palestinian worshippers in uh, Hebron, killing 29 nine of them. Uh, he wants Israel to take over the West Bank, more settlements, you know, all these sort of things. He calls his Arab colleagues in the Knesset terrorists. Uh, he wants to deport uh, Israeli Arabs who, who he regards as disloyal. You know, so this gives you an idea of the sort of man that uh, Bibi Netanyahu, who is going to have to deal with in the, the days, weeks, month, months ahead. You know, what sort of position is he going to give him? Uh, he himself, Ben Gvir, is demanding that he get one of the most senior positions in the cabinet in charge of public security uh, and the police. Um, if he gets that, there's going to be immense concern uh, in Israeli politics, at least on the other side of the spectrum, uh, about where this is going to take Israel. Before the election, senior figures in Israeli politics were, were calling uh, the two leaders of religious Zionism a pair of pyromaniacs because they were going to set Israeli, Israel alight. That is the concern you know, among those uh, who were opposed to uh, Netanyahu's coalition, and particularly, it should be said, uh, on the... Arab side uh, of Israeli society. Okay, well, to see what happens. Again, we're expecting those final results uh, sometime tomorrow. Chief Foreign Editor Rob Parsons. Rob, thanks as always.